Hey everybody, welcome back to Nikki Nights. For anybody who can see, there are people like listening to this, I'm sure, in the car right now. They're like, what is she talking about? Frizz action. I'm talking about my hair, you guys. Oh, it's frizzy. Um, but you know, what can you do? Hi. Um, I hope you're all doing well. It feels like it's been a very long time since I did a podcast, but it, it hasn't been. It's only been a week. A lot's just happened uh, in the world. Um, uh, as you all know, we're all kind of, uh, holding, holding ourselves together right now for the next couple of days. Uh, by the time this podcast comes out though, we will, uh, have an outcome with the election. So, um, yeah, I, you know, I just want to, uh, just say as a newly out, uh, member of the LGBT community. Um, I've, I just posted something on my Instagram and uh, it was just, it, it perfectly, it captures exactly how I feel. Don't tell someone you love them and then vote for someone who will hurt them. Uh, so that's, that's all I have to say on the matter. Um, so I'm going to bring in my guest. I'm super excited to talk to him today. Wow. What a body of work. Um, but also, I can't wait to talk to him about his background in acting and how he got started, because I know it didn't start in acting. It started on the football field over in the UK. We're going to talk to Mark Ashworth right now. Let's bring in Mark. Hey. Hey, Nikki. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. Awesome. So where am I talking to you from today? I am up in my office this afternoon in, in Georgia, in Atlanta. Nice. Yeah. nice. Yeah. I've only, believe it or not, I've traveled a lot, but I've never spent a lot of time in Georgia. I think I've passed through the airport in Atlanta. Yeah. This big city for the, for the hub, there, the airport. But I, I, I don't know. Yeah. I guess uh, aside from Coca-Cola, there's, there's, there's not a great deal of things here now the industry's here though of course with with that kind of thing there's a there's a lot of that going on but um yeah, yeah i've yeah, heard about that uh, i've heard you know for anybody who is like tuning in um there has been like a big research like a big big surgence of work in atlanta um with the entertainment business i mean yeah. and it's and it's back now right with covid they're everything's it's starting struggling. to pick up it is, it is coming back. It is, it is trickling back. I think just like everything else that's kind of happening around this whole pandemic right now, people are kind of tired of it and, and people are trying to, trying to um, work around it as best as possible. Um, I would say it, it, it is trickling back and, and they're trying to come back. A, it, it's definitely a world away from what it was in regard to the, the the weight of it and 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 how fast and furious it was right you know, it's only right that it slowed down in respect for the, the pandemic you know absolutely and now are you back to work have you been back to work post covid i i did a little bit of work with um a friend of mine i'd worked with on a film um years ago and he he'd asked me to jump on board with him on a project it's kind of it's kind of like a uh, a pitch project you know um produce the season episode and uh, the pilot and then um and then try and pitch that obviously he's got the the whole season lined up in script but but then use that as proof of concept to go forward and try and uh, get investors on board and have the whole season done so we we shot that during um, the shutdown of the industry. Right. I was able to do that a little bit. Um, I, I have been fortunate enough to be on set. I was on set last week and I've got another week coming up here on a, on a show in town called uh, Creep Show. That's great. Uh, yeah, it's amazing. I'm, I'm very, very grateful. It, it's been so nice to kind of feel like I'm, I'm doing something. Since this all happened, um, I have been working at my friend's restaurant, which I used to do. Um, I used to be a waiter, you know, like most actors, I think you have to find something that can complement the, 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 uh, the lack of income that you have and, and yeah. waiting table was it for me. And, um, since this started, um, I, 
I jumped back, helped him. We were catering meals for um, healthcare workers here in town. I think we were doing like 400 meals a day. Wow. Um, yeah, it was, it was, it was pretty um, relentless. The pace that we were going. And um, now everything has come back. I honestly, Nikki, I've, I've, I've been working at the restaurant now more than I, I have ever worked at the restaurant. And, um, it's tough and so to have the opportunity to be back on set uh, this last week it's like thank you thank you I'm, I'm able to um play a little bit you know and I've definitely missed that it's so important to have that I'll tell you um so I guess it was it was last year I be right I guess it was before the pandemic hit I want to say December end of November December I found myself in need of a job uh, acting, it, I was auditioning, but things just weren't coming in. So I went to Starbucks and I got a job there and I worked there for about, I'd say five months, six months. And then, you know, the pandemic happened and I was still working there. And then I eventually took a leave and started my podcast. Um, but I can't tell you what, just how much I value the business more and these experiences more mm -hmm. after being behind that counter. Not that right. it's not that it's a bad place. It just when you are are creative and you have, you know, you've been on set and you've had these experiences, it's extremely tough and very humbling to kind of just I mean it was I had a very strange experience because my coworkers would play Good Morning Baltimore, or I Can Hear the Bells, one of the songs from Hairspray over the loudspeakers, and the customers would look at me and say, am I being pranked? Uh -huh. Say, no. You know, and so for me, it was just a very strange experience, and now just to know that I'm going back to a film set, um, my heart has never felt fuller. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. just, wow. It takes, it takes uh, I think, valuable life lessons along the way that you go through to, to really appreciate what you have when you have it, you know, and it's so important to, to go through that struggle. I feel like it is. It, it just creates a fuller version of whoever you are uh, whenever, whenever you have that in, inside you. You know, it's like anything that you, you, you want bad enough, you'll do whatever it takes to get there and do it, you know. Yeah. And it gives you, I call them stripes. Um, you know, you're working at Starbucks, that's, that's an actor's stripe yeah. right there. You know, it, it may not be acting, it may not have anything to do with acting, but it is what's taking you, um, do, do whatever you can to stay in the fight kind of a thing. And, and, and that is a definite stripe. Working to uh, fuel your dreams is, is something to be proud of. I think for me, I had to really learn, as corny as it sounds, that it's not about the destination, it's about the journey, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. As, as cheese ball as that sounds, it's true. Um, and your journey, I want to say, I was just, you know, reading up, started in football, huh? Yeah. Well, kind of. That, 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 my, 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 my journey began in England, and, and football is such a big part of right english culture uh, you know it, it it has been we invented the game for crying out loud <laughs> so football's always been a part of me and that's who i was and i'm still even though i'm not able to play i'm still pretty religious with with my tribal instincts of football um and i'll, I'll always be a united fan and um yeah when i stopped when i uh, the the journey it took a sharp turn when I stopped playing football because that, that was something that I was doing that was giving me fulfillment and, and I was getting joy from, I was being creative and um, enjoying my weekends. And, and then when that got taken away, when I couldn't do it any longer to the extent that I used to, it, it, it made me um, look, look elsewhere for something. And, and I found it in, in acting. Um, a friend of a friend's a girlfriend was, was, was going to classes and she told me about them and I, I'd never known it was in Atlanta and it could be something you could kind of do yourself. It was always something I had thought people that were actors had had to go to school and, and gone through fine dramatic arts class. And um, 
I, I, I just never had the financial uh, capabilities to be able to push me forward that way. And so it was always a, a pipe dream or something I just wasn't aware of. And so, yeah, I, um, I, I got out of football and kind of started putting my money towards that and putting my, my, my mind towards uh, something else I could be creative at. Well, when I was reading about the football, it brought me back to the many stories that I've heard. I have family over in the UK in Edinburgh, and my yeah. so my great grandfather played professionally. He played football professionally. Yes. I don't know what what team, but my mom has the medal, his medal. She wears it around her neck. No. Um, and and then it's funny, my grandfather, who uh, which was so that would have been his son-in-law. Um, he actually played semi-professional football here in America. And his cousin was one of the original Chicago Bears. So <laughs> at Thanksgiving, Mark, when everybody would be talking about Thanksgiving, it was like, you know, you would see like the little birdies chirping around my head. <laughs> I was like, what is going on? I knew, I still, you know, I don't know a lot about the game, but um, it's, it's an incredible, I noticed I played nine years of softball. Oh, and when cool. you're on a team and, you know, it's almost like that unity. There's, there's a goal in mind. You want to win the game. And when you're all going for the same goal, you start to build this bond with these people. It's just a natural thing. And I think that's what happens on set, obviously. You yeah. know, going for this, you know, people always ask me, were there any like diva moments on this set of hairspray with anybody? And I, I say, no, because we all had this end goal in mind. We all just wanted to make this amazing movie and we all wanted to be on set. That's awesome. I didn't know you were in that. Uh, Amy, Amy never told me a great deal about you, but that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, no, that was, a, yeah, that was a movie I did like 400 years ago. But, <laughs> Where did you shoot? Um, was that shot in New York or? No, um, we actually shot that in Toronto, Canada. Oh, I love Toronto. I love it too. And it's, oh, it's amazing. I, we lived there for like eight months and I miss it so much. I do. The I, culture there, the culture is so vibrant, right? And diverse and just, it's like a clean New York almost. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so when I first got to Toronto, two things happened. I had to check out the subway system because I heard it was amazing. Being a New Yorker, I was like, I, my friends were like, where are you going? I said, I have to see the subways. I went to the subway. It was beautiful. You could literally like sit down and have a picnic yeah. on, on the subway floor. It was gorgeous. So clean. <laughs> so clean. Yeah. New York. I love my city, but yeah. no. What about the walkways too? The underground little malls that you can walk around the city when it gets really cold? Were you there in the winter? Yes. You must have been close to it. You must have been at eight months. Um, I, we saw every season. And awesome. then we went, I filmed, we went way up north to a town, I believe it was called Hamilton. And underneath our hotel was a mall. I was filming so much, I had no idea. My mom, I, as she came late to set one day, I said, where were you? She said, oh, there's a mall under our hotel. I said, oh boy. <laughs> I, I knew Her DM was going out the window that day. <laughs> but, I'm going to have to watch Hairspray. I've not seen it now, so I'm going to go back and watch it. Oh watch my it. gosh. Well, yeah. thanks. But I was yeah. just looking at some of your work, and I saw that scene with you and Denzel. Wow. Yeah. That was fun. Can you talk about that project? Sure. Yeah, that was uh, that was Magnificent Seven. I I um I we when I booked the, the role, I, it was uh, I think it was six weeks likely to extend to nine. Um, I booked it, and I I I um I had one line when I got the script. I had one line in that whole film, and um, it was funny because I was looking at, through the script. I, there were places where the preacher would be, and and so I prepped those moments, you know, after I had booked it, but. I, I, I looked through the script, I called Joy, my agent, and I said, Joy, there's one, one scene in this. Are you sure they won't be down there for six weeks? I said, this is amazing. This is a dream come true. And uh, she said, yeah, they want you down there. So went down there and um, you know you know what it's like on set. You, you, get, you get so many script rewrites as they come in from the days they shot before, they'll be adjusting it 
to include whatever the, the actors had done. If they'd done something a little different, they'll change it. So they were coming in every other night, it felt like. They went through Goldenrod, I think, seven times. Uh, something ridiculous. Go, uh, three, three times. Goldenrod, I think, is the seventh draft of a script. And, and they went through that three times. Um, a lot, a lot of rewrites, and so it was like I was, I was there. I ended up being there for three months, and this was like two weeks from the end of shooting. And there were, there, we were sitting down at lunch. I remember with the other guys, the the other Rose Creek um, people that lived in Rose Creek. There, the other actors, and and one of the guys, my friend Sean Boyd, said, "Hey," he says, uh, "There's been a they've, they've gotten rid of this scene, and they've gotten rid of that scene." I was like, "Oh well, they're, they're normal." And he said, but there's a great scene with you and number one in it. I was like, oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, great. I read that. Yeah, that's that's meat and potatoes. I read it. And I, I, I thought he was joking. So I was just playing along with him. And um, um, I went home that night and had a look at the the, the um, script that they passed out, that we were going to be working on the next day, the sides. And um, sure enough, there was a scene there with me and Denzel upon a porch. And um, I, I, I couldn't believe it. It was amazing. Um, so, I, you know, I had a, a day or two, I think, to work on that. And uh, yeah, we went out there, just just me and him, really. It was amazing. Amazing. That was just, we shot that like in the middle of the night. It was. It took us all the way till sun up. And it was just one of those nights on set that, you know, you, you, you can carry with you forever and you'll never forget. And, and it's like dr driving home and the sun's coming up. And I just remembered just that feeling of like, wow, did that really just happen? You know, uh, I've just, just had a scene with, with one of the greats and um, it, it, was, it was just, it was magic. It was a magical night and, and I couldn't be more happy. As, as, as it came out, I was like, man, I hope I've made the court. And then I was, it went from, from that to, oh, I hope that scene makes the cut. And, you know, I couldn't believe I'd be fighting for that in my mind. And, and then it did, it did make the cut along with pretty much everything else that I'd prepped, those little ad lib moments that, that the director allowed us to feel through in the scenes. He knew that that's where the heart was. So he, he gave us much freedom to, to, to kind of feel our way through the moments. And they, they, a bunch of my stuff made it on screen and he was adding stuff as we were shooting. It was just a dream. You know, th those jobs don't come along. Uh, and I know uh, they, they, they just don't come along. There's people on there that were seasoned, that had been round the block a couple of times and they were like, this is, this is kind of a one-off. You know, they were just like that with the money. It was just bizarre how, how, how much they were just kind of whew, moolah. Um, I remember there was this extra that was on set and um, he he had this really kind of long and a bit lanky and um, he was he was taken under the wing of my my friend Richie Montgomery. He was like the saloon owner and he took him under because he was a perfect little 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 lurch guy. <laughs> he was just <laughs> wandering around and and he took him under his wing and he brought him in and he he um, he told him to say a line. He gave him a line. Uh, uh, Richie said, "When you come up, say it." And they didn't keep it, but because they 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 liked it and they liked the idea of him being there with my friend Richie, he for the last like month he was he he, he came from extra town where there's like hundred extras to having his own little honey wagon and being paid money, he paid off his student loan that summer, you know, because my friend Richie was like, "Man, just get up there and say say this." And, and he did it. And Richie was, Richie's a great actor. He's the gift of gab, you know, sometimes you give him an improv yard, he'll go and go and go. Uh, but he's brilliant. And he's got a very, very memorable look and sound to him as an actor. And for him to have, have brought him in and, you know, kind of put him under his wing and, and said that, he just, you know, we... Um, we were saying, man, you've, you've made it now, dude. This is it, <laughs> you know? But the truth of the matter is, after after all that goes, it's just like then it's like back to back to ground one again. Wow, back I to, know. Back to um, back to normal again. Back to the hustle, you know, which is what it is. But 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 forever with that in our hearts, right? With, with, so with true. Gift. I feel like you have just spoken from my heart. You know, everything that I've wanted to express since hairspray, like all of these 
that feeling of when you just do that scene and you rap for the night and they yell, it's a rap, you know, go home or you hear just, and then that feeling of being in the van on the way back to the hotel or wherever it is. And you are watching the sun come up, but your heart is literally the most full you've ever felt. It almost feels like it's beating out of your chest just with like pure excitement. It, I don't know. There's like an electricity in the air. I oh, yeah. just, it just feels like no other feeling in the world. I remember so many nights just driving home after filming with John Travolta or, or anybody. And I would just be like, that didn't happen. There's no way that yeah. that happened. Um, but it's funny. You Can I ask you a question? I had a project fly me in a week and a half early one time and before I was ready to film. And I thought I was going to lose my mind in the hotel just being there. What was that like for that much time to be there and maybe not be like, were you were you on set or were you at the hotel preparing? Because when I'm left in a hotel by myself to prepare, oh my gosh. Yeah, it can get messy up upstairs, can't it? It can. That's part of the job too. And and same with set management. You can you've just gotta you've gotta know how to handle yourself. That's just an important part of the job too. Uh, and I say important part of the job, it's important part of your self-care, first and foremost. That's that that is the job. If you've not got that, you've not got the job. Um, I was very fortunate in in that I was I was pretty much they the, there was maybe um, a couple of days that I wasn't used, but they they brought us to set every single day because we were on weekly contracts. That's amazing. Yeah, you know, so we were we were um, we were self drive. They 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 purchased a rental car for us. Um, and I was able to drive. I was one of the lucky ones too. I was because I wasn't. I was brought in from out of town. I guess they they didn't put me up in a hotel there. They put me up in this kind of a weird. It was like a golf community. It was beautiful. I was very fortunate. I I had my own like living room. I had a half of a kitchen, and I had a bedroom in the back with a bathroom and doors. The front doors in the in the in the living room opened up to the golf course. Wow. So in the morning, it was like just the windows open. Where was this? It was in, we, so we shot in St. Francisville, uh, Louisiana, just about an hour and a half outside of Baton Rouge. Sorry. And um, the other guys were like at Motel 8, and I could see that it, it, it may not have been Motel 8, but it was kind of one of those. It was in the middle of nowhere. It was the nicest hotel that was in the area, and it, it was a it was it was a hotel you had to walk in you had to do the pass and do that in the door you yeah. know and 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 i was very grateful to have the opportunity my wife was able to come and visit um with my daughter who was i missed her first birthday because i was down there shooting that so she came down father's day which was a week or two after and um, she came down three times while i was there which was great um but it, it was cool it was just you know they could stay at the place and it not be boring for them to be in the hotel it was I was very very fortunate yeah I mean I it's interesting hotel living I've been doing it on and off now for 14 years and it's it, it's 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 interesting I have my own ways you know we we have our ways in hotels but you said something really important like you were talking about self-care and I think for me in the beginning of my career, I was so um, just let me do everything. I was a big people pleaser, and I I oh. always put everything first, everybody else first. I put at the, obviously the production, but but then I really realized I want to say the past five six years of my career, no, you have to take care of you, and you yeah. have to do you know what fuels you throughout the day what makes you feel good you have to take care of yourself on the weekends and you know because we don't get that much downtime on the weekends um I know sometimes there's always press to do especially if you're in LA or New York and so I mean yeah I, I'm glad you brought that up because for me for a long time I didn't practice a ton of like internal self-care like I took care of like okay the fridge is stocked there's water great but you know 
There's a lot of other stuff. There's a lot of mental preparation that goes into spending that much time in a hotel by yourself as well. Yeah, yeah you know, there is, there is. And you have to do whatever it is to, to create um, and, and, and live in a certain sense of, of, of normalcy. You have to try and do what you can uh, in routine, I guess, and keep as much as you can so it doesn't feel um, so far away from where you need to be, which is right here you know yeah. yeah like you know I, I don't know going for a walk or you know just getting outside um you know if you're in a new area too it's nice to go out and and and, and do do a little bit of the the, the tour thing or to, to appreciate the area that you are in to some degree like you would do if you're at home you know going for a walk seeing a waterfall or whatever it is um that that, that fills you up just gonna try and trying to catch as much of that as you can is is important and not not forgetting about that and thinking you're just there for the work you know no 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 you, you're there for you and the yeah. work is something because of you very true true words sir true. I tell you what um just going back to that 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 feeling that, that that we have and that thing that just kind of just gives us butterflies and we pinch ourselves I want to be clear that those, those feelings don't only come and they can't only come from when you're on, on the big studio ones, right? They can't because you, 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 would, you would die a, a very painful death if you were waiting for those moments. It's important to find those moments um, in our journey um, in every single step in the building block step where, where, we're, where we're, um, we're learning. You know, when, when we go up and, and we put ourselves in front of a class and, 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 and we do a presentation for the first time, that's a massive hurdle. The very, very first time you're on set, that's a massive hurdle. You've got these little mind things in your head saying, why am I doing this? What am I doing? Um, do I really need this? Am I, is this the right thing? And, and you jump that hurdle and you go back again and that's another hurdle just for going back. Yeah. Uh, it's important not to get swept up in the the the, the accomplishments of or the the, the so-called thought of accomplishment. Um, you know, it's um, it's something that, that can be dangerous. Yeah, it's it's not a, you know it's not everything you know. the home run. You know, it's not just hitting it out of the park once yeah. and and we're just going to run the bases. Sometimes the things most worth having and experiences are things that maybe you have to go through a couple of times or figure yeah. out or pull apart and figure out what's wrong or, yeah. and then figure out what's worth or putting it back together and, and then adding new things and, or just cultivating it to its best potential and then yeah. moving forward. Yeah. Always look after yourself. Even when you're falling flat on your face, there's a, there's an element of of a realization that you can you you've 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 taken that into account now. You know that you've fallen. If you look at it closer, you 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 can figure out how you fell, how you landed, and then how to get back up again. You know, it th those those are accomplishments in themselves. You know falling flat on your face and just learning from it. That's massive. Whenever you, whenever you fall flat, it, it, it is it's such a big, valuable, important lesson and such a big stripe that you're going to get. Um, you know, um, I, I think one, one of my things that I've been working on too, as far as um, just getting enjoyment is, is, is learning to enjoy the audition process. That's so hard. It's been so hard for me. And yeah. I'm still working on it is, is, you know, sometimes they come in, I'm like, Oh gosh, it's six pages. And I'm, I've got another one that's come in too. And that's four pages. What? Oh, and then I get bogged down with it. And, and I just, you know, it, it, it's, it's really, it's, it's, it's such a skill. It's an art in, if you can, if you can somehow separate yourself from, from those feelings and, and, and try and look towards the joy and, and the creative elements of it. There's, there's so many things to, to be proud of when, when you're talking about the journey and it just doesn't all come from being on set. You know, there's so many moments that you, 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 you get. I mean, you're having a great conversation with, with the director, um, you know, uh, on, the, on an indie short um, yeah. that you're playing a good role in and, and just, 
having a little bit of input into that character with him and him listening to you and taking it all in those are great conversations those 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 you know no maybe nobody will see that short slight of day but the fact you're able to uh, form cohesive thoughts as the character and give it to the director and he's able to 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 work with you in that team as it should be um, those 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 moments are all to be celebrated i think there's a lot of celebrations that's one thing to to to, to try and find is is things to celebrate in this craft right yeah absolutely i mean there's so many things you know just i think just um just stepping up and saying i want to act is something to be celebrated in itself to be yeah. because i think it's one of those things where um when you tell somebody you know that you decide in the beginning hey I'm gonna act and it's either, you know, with my parents, they understood because I've been singing since I'm three. So they just have not heard me stop singing for the past 30 years. So <laughs> they were just like, they, they knew that it was inevitable that I was gonna be in the arts in some magnitude. But I mean, yeah, when you have that passion and, but when you do say to somebody for the first time, I'm gonna act you either get that look of like oh my god that's amazing like my parents were like oh yeah that makes sense or you get that oh yeah oh oh yeah. like the three o's they you know they the, the, yeah. it's the oh do i tell my friend this is a very bad idea oh shit my friends possibly lost their mind and oh boy i have to go on this journey with them that's yeah. really the three o's i feel that's 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 an empowering moment. Yeah. Right? That's empowering. You're empowering yourself and and training your you, you, to empower yourself in, in in mind is is so valuable. I think it takes you know, I think as much fear as I have sometimes when it comes to um putting you know, work together or like you were saying, when the auditions come in, I get very overwhelmed and I'm like, oh, I have so much to prepare. And I feel like I'm running around like a chicken with my head cut off. But then at the end of the day, I just go, I feel so lucky to be in this business and it just feels right. And sometimes I'm a person that very much goes on gut feelings. When things feel right, I go with them. I think that might also be the actor in me. Do you agree with that? Because I feel like, you know, I don't know if you're a person who goes on gut feelings, but when I go on my gut feelings, my friends are like, okay, they're just crossing their fingers. Like, I can't believe she's going on these feelings. But, you know, I think that as an actor, you kind of have to have a little bit of fearlessness and, or be, just willing to let go a little bit yeah you have to the unknown yeah you have to you can't you can't pre-plan any of that i think definitely you um the, the, the more you're in in the industry the, the the more um the gut feelings become calculated you know you've 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 um You've gone through some learning curves there, I would imagine. At first, they, they start out as gut feelings that you don't act on, you know, but the longer you're around, the more you start um, to be um, propelled in either direction by those gut feelings, you know. Um, it, it's important to recognize them for sure, for what they are, you know, and, and sometimes they are maybe unfounded, but... Um, a, a lot of the times, uh, I think anytime a gut feeling comes up, the, the, there's there's valid reason, you know. And sometimes you can you can step away now. I think I I've I, I've stepped away from a number of things, and again, that's a, just another empowering decision you've made by um, living through uh, the fear, so to speak. You know, jump in and, and... yeah. I feel, um, I, and you know, it's interesting. Um, you say jumping, you have to really just jump into this business. It's somebody, I had an actor friend say to me one time, they said, if I get one more DM of somebody asking me how to become an actor and how to, they said, you just have to just, he said, finally, I wrote back to them and said, you just, either you just gotta 
jump to LA or move to New York. He goes, and I told him like, that's how you have to do it. And it's true. You have to jump in. Like it's, you can't, it's when you feel something so deeply, I just, I knew at a very young age that I just, I had to perform. I had in some way, I had to get it out almost, you know? Yeah. So, I don't, I don't, I don't know what I would do now if I didn't have this. I don't, I don't, I don't know what I'd do. Um, you know, it's, it's not, it's not the be all and end all for me, but it, it gives me so much joy and fulfillment. Right. That it, it, if I were to take that away, I, I would need to fill it with something else. And I just don't know what that would be. You know, yeah. I don't know. Um, I love it. I love learning. I love learning because it is ultimately learning about yourself, you know, yeah. Um, who you are, how you act in certain situations in front of whoever it is that you're in front of and, and then craft aside how you are in front of crew and things like that and learning, learning yourself in those moments, you know, learning yourself in the hotel room, <laughs> how are you going to act if you're sitting in a hotel room for a couple of weeks on end? And, you know, um, there's 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 so much to be said about just going through the paces of it all and and just so much so much to learn along the way uh, peppered uh, that's that's one thing that keeps me um tuned in with it all is is the fact that i don't think you ever stop learning i don't think you could possibly ever stop learning about every different avenue of it the business side the 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 technical the craft element the 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 personal um stuff that you bring set um whatever it is it's it's there's always something there that that can change and can change you and other people and and situations and scenarios it's it's incredible and there's also so many different people from like on set so many different people from so many different backgrounds, all experts in their own little areas and own little niches, and they all come together. And it's, I just, it really, I have learned so much about production. And I was just talking the other day to somebody that I'm going to be working with on a future project. And I said to him, I said, do you remember when they used to film on film? I said, what are we using to film this movie? And we started talking about, you know, all these different things. And for a second, I, I was a little proud of myself that I knew, <laughs> I said, I may have not gone to college, but I did go to uh, the University of Hairspray. And that is a crash course in the business. And when you learn these things along the way, I sometimes I, I found myself where I felt uh, maybe a little subpar in conversations with people that have gone to these big Ivy League schools and I've, I've just acted since I'm 17. And then I remind myself, well, you have learned something and they have no idea what check the gate okay. means or martini shot means, yeah. they have no idea. They have no clue who craft service yeah. is. They have no idea. So, you know, take, yeah. it, take everything for what you will with a grain of salt, but you know, we all have our own journeys and our uh, own paths. Yeah. And that's really what I've been learning in my 30s. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. And now you have a daughter. Would you, I did. Would you ever let her get into the business? Oh, of course. Yeah, I mean, if that's something she wanted to, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to try and not let her not do anything. If right. that makes sense, you know. Um, I, I wanted to do everything. I wanted to 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 do everything and, and, and feel everything and just see, just see what she wants to do. You know, um, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't stop her from, from doing anything that isn't going to hurt her. And, and, you know, I think I can probably prepare her for certain things in the industry. If it's something that she wanted to get into, um, that would give her a, a step up. I would, I would help her if she wanted help, you know, she, um, she's so, outgoing she's amazing she's like she's she's a little caricature almost she's a mess she's an absolute mess she's bonkers and uh, i think she would be well suited for that 
um, kind of expressionism, you know? Yeah. But um, that's that's something I think uh, I would never, I'm, I'm not like a stage dad. I wouldn't want to kind of push her to that or say that. I, it's got to be from her, you know, the only thing that I'm going to make her do is sit down and eat. Right. <laughs> And go yeah. to bed <laughs> at yeah. normal time. That's that's just about it, you know. That's and, uh, beautiful. <laughs> I think when you when you um, I'm not a parent, but I have a goddaughter. But I don't even pretend to know what being a parent is like. And, and to be a parent, also in today's world, I just want to say that I give you all the utmost credit and respect because that is a whole other feat in itself. Like being a parent in the nineties and eh, like now props to all of you. Um, but I think to like not put those boundaries around and, and let her experience things. I think that's really beautiful and really giving of you and uh, selfless because, you know, I, I may be turning 32 and, what is it? Seven days now. But um, my parents are still two of my best friends. And they very much raised me with that. If she's going to experience something, she's going to experience it, but we're going to be there for her. And yeah. recently, I it, it, that kind of same thing happened that ha used to happen as a kid where I found myself in a situation where I was crying. And my parents knew that I was going to get into the situation. But when I was there, they were there for me. No. And I think that is one of the most beautiful things. So as a 32-year-old woman who still looks up to her dad, I know your daughter is going to feel the exact same thing. Oh, uh, she's great. And, I'm, 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 you know, her, her mother, my wife, is is just amazing in every way with with looking after him um, what she does she's a stay-at-home mom and and she's able to you know i think we're we've, we've decided right before this happened that we we're going to homeschool so the, there's there's a lot that goes into it you know we, we we both made a decision that no no devices um no television until she was about six you know we didn't want to um introduce her to 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 that kind of blankness that comes from just sitting down watching tv or getting on one of those things you know yeah. it's, been a, it's been a lot of work um i obviously have been um coming to and from the house between work and what have you and and i'm, I'm so grateful that that my wife has been able to implement the strategy that that has ultimately paid off already in in how ilva converses with us and how connected she is to other people to to, to the outside world and um, to going for a walk to picking up leaves and picking up stones and finding the beauty in those things you know rather than just plugged in all the time and it's um i, I appreciate you giving credit um but it's not it's not all definitely not all me my wife is uh she's she's amazing yeah no i well i'm just saying yeah um, i'm not a mom but my mom's pretty awesome and yeah i mean it does it take it takes something special to to let somebody engage with life you know what i mean you're teaching her to engage and pick up the pretty leaves and and go for walks and experience things and I think that's absolutely gorgeous. And I wish that, you know, everybody would kind of. It has to be a conscious decision almost. Yeah. Conscious decision to be unconscious of it. Yeah. But, but just play it into your everyday. Because I feel like it's so much easier for parents to hand their kids an iPad and go, here you go, and then walk away. You know, you're actually sitting there and spending the time. And so that's a relationship that you're cultivating and building with her. And that's a bond that'll never be broken. Yeah, I hope not. We we used to sit down and watch TV on with with our dinners, and then when when the little one came along, we just sit there eating our dinner, looking at her. Yeah, just, you know, it just it, it's crazy. It's crazy. I, yeah, uh, I I I I'm learning my way, and we're learning our way as far as parenting goes. And you know, it's 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 mostly all good. I don't know 
a lot of people, and I get it because I probably was the same way. It's like some people I know at work, I've had a conversation with a friend and it's like, I just don't know if I'm ready. It's like, if you're thinking about it like that, you won't, I don't know that you will ever be ready, and, but you always will be and you just don't know it. You always will. If, if, if it's, you know, it's, it's not as easy as everybody says, as far as having children, those, we went through loss first um, before we got to um, our daughter now that we're able to hold every day. And um, it, it's not as easy. Um, actually, just, just making a decision to be a parent isn't just all straightforward. We're such a miracle to be here, you know, and until you, you, you become a percentage, you don't realize how much of a miracle it is you know and how much um of a gift it is to to even go through uh, being pregnant yeah i mean mm. you're so incredibly enlightened mark ashworth <laughs> you are yeah. i'm just saying yeah. and where i mean what are what's coming up for you next what projects are on the horizon um, I'm hoping I'm coming back for Stargirl season two at some point. I was on that last year. I was so grateful to be on that. I was on, I think I had like eight, eight or nine episodes by the end of the year. And um, they, they didn't die. So I'm hoping that I'll get to come back a little bit. Um, aside from that, now auditions are just trickling in. Um, I've got that, that um, pilot that we're currently in post-production on, hoping that that will get picked up because that would be a great run. Um, and that's kind of set in pandemic era. I'm a postal service is going postal and um, postal service worker. Um, it is really cool. And um, yeah, we're going to work on that and then just audition and just, just, just work, just work. I'm hopeful to, to, to get out of the restaurant as much as possible there and get back on set. Yes. Well, I wish the same for you and I wish you all the best. And I just thank you so much for sharing your stories with me and taking this time. Of course. Has it been an hour already, Nikki? Oh my, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Wow. Almost. wow, we've been, I've been. No, it's been beautiful. <laughs> I, I love talking to other actors and hearing everybody's different experiences because mm -hmm. that's the thing. It's like we all have so many different experiences with the craft and yeah. different approaches, different everything. But sometimes, just like you and I today, we definitely synced up. We just knowing that you feel that feeling, I feel that feeling. And yes. there are other actors out there that know exactly what we're talking about. And for anybody who's not an actor, it's just a feeling of just sheer joy. So apply it to whatever it is in your life that brings yeah. you the most happiness. Do what makes your heart sing. Always. Yes. Nikki, it's been a pleasure. Give us a hug. Oh my yeah. gosh. I adore you. Yeah. You're the cutest. Be uh, well. I love you. Take care, Nikki. Bye. Bye. Oh my gosh, he's adorable. That's the first time I've virtually hugged somebody through the camera. I adore you, Mark Ashworth. Thank you so much for your stories and your time and telling us about your journey and the path that you're on. Mark just touched on so many subjects um, that are just apply to so many areas of my life right now, from acting to person, everything. But he's right. When you feel something and you know and you feel it in your heart, you have to go with it. Um, this is a wild time that we're all living in. It's a scary time. But just, I leave you with this all the time. Just treat each other with kindness. Treat people the way you want to be treated. And just take care of each other. Um, you know, also this month uh, is a month that I lost my uncle to suicide. So um, I encourage you all to pick up the phone and check on your loved ones and uh, just see how they're doing. It takes nothing to send a text message. Say, hey, Aunt Susie, whatever, just seeing how you are, um, you know, just uh, just be the type of person that you would want to be surrounded by. Um, 
You know, I always go back to the wise words of my grandma, but as I get older, um, they become more prevalent. So I adore you all. I'm sending you so much love and be well. Bye. Thank you.